And yet they're so wedded to this left-wing narrative and their viewers and the base of the Democratic Party is joined at the hip with this left-wing pro-Hamas movement. They can't do anything. People warned, when Biden came into office, Laura, people warned him not to resume aid to the Palestinians and in Gaza. And his own State Department warned him that it would be fungible. They warned him not to give money to Iran. They warned him not to do this Iran hostage deal. They warned him not to... Uh, dropped the sanctions. People warned, everybody warned him not to appoint Robert Malley, who's now under investigation by the FBI. He was their Iran nuclear negotiator. They wanted to get back in the nuke Iran deal. They said, this guy is not reliable. He's an anti-Semite. And what he's under investigation for maybe espionage, but surely dissemination of classified documents. And then, we, so this is completely what you'd expect. And Joe Biden is nowhere to be seen. Every Four or five hours, he pops up and says he stands with Israel, and then he disappears, and then he outsources it to whom? Anthony Blinken makes a statement with a pro-Hamas Turkish foreign minister, and then immediately calls for a ceasefire after 900 Jews have been butchered, and then he deletes his tweet. And then the, something called the U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs tweets right at the beginning, no, no, no counter-violence, do not react. This is the U.S. government. And then they delete their tweet. They can't even get their, their act straight. And this goes out all over the world. In other words, would they do that with Ukraine, Laura? Would they say to the Ukrainians, you're in a cycle of violence. Do not retaliate to Putin aggression by violence. They would never do that. And yet that's